Well, the history of Cabrini Green is like this, you know, um, Cabrini Green was originally built for um, soldiers coming home from the war. It used to be a traditionally Irish and Italian mixed um, public housing community. Um, over the years, um, it started to change where more and more African Americans started to move into the community and then you had white flight. Um, after that, um, Cabrini Green hung around for a long period of time. Um, it went through various hands of management, um, Chicago Housing Authority, Hood, then back into the management of residents. And when, ma when management was ran by residents, it was a beautiful place. It was a beautiful community. Um, I remember times uh, we, we would have um, outings, community cookouts. Um, we had some many community programs over here. <laughs> Children had things to do. Um, it, it was easy to find employment. Um, our resident management companies made sure that we had work. Um, taking care of the community, which was key, that they hired a lot of people from the community to take care of the community, and that's how we pretty much cap it up. Cabrini Green started to change as the politics in Chicago started to change. Um, the management eventually had a contract not renewed. Um, it was given to the uh, friends of um, the mayor who subsequently, after he received it, allowed a gate to fall down and kill a three-year-old boy. Um, after that happened, it changed hands to another management company. Um, the new management company had been completely disrespectful to residents. Um, but throughout the history of Cabrini Green, his, Cabrini Green has always been known to fight and resist. But over the years, you know, through the mismanagement by the housing authority and budget cuts, um, our community been able to fall into despair. Um, but we as residents have been the ones that's taken care of it. We have always been strong on taking care of each other, and our main goal is to make sure that nobody's over here a victim. Um, we got involved with the Chicago anti-eviction campaign. Uh, we started this up because we felt that there was too much money being spent to bail out the banks, to bail out General Motors, to bail out the foreclosed few. But there's never any money to bail out the people at the bottom. So since government didn't have a timely response to stop this eviction, since government could not provide a way to prevent this um, single mother of two, grandmother of two from being evicted, we as the great citizens of Chicago came together, um, black, white, Latino, rich, um, poor. Um, a lot of us came together just to stop what we thought was something inhumane and immoral. And that's to evict somebody who's poor. There's nothing humane about evicting somebody who's poor, regardless of what the factor is. My brother was down here. I was upstairs when they came. Um, I know I heard a lot of banging, well, at least, at least four or five times. And after that, the, I heard the, the breaking of the door and them screaming, don't move, don't move, this is the eviction, this is the eviction. And when I was jumping up to come upstairs, a lady came upstairs and was like, hurry up, get some pants, get some pants on. Um, this is, an, this is an eviction. No, you can't grab anything. Just put on some pants because you're being evicted today. So when I came downstairs, they said that um, my brother was like, uh, the other gentleman had guns on him. And he let me know that, um, he let me know that, that they said that my brother was, he, he was the reason why I wasn't being evicted at this time because he was an unauthorized occupant. I've been fighting this, this case for a year and I've been trying to like make meetings with the management office in order for them to help me obtain a, a payment arrangement or, you know, just become understanding because I had a difficult time with even just, you know, being able to even talk with them because they didn't want to hear my story. We have to draw the line. You know, uh, we can't be dependent upon government to enforce our human rights to housing. We as the people got to enforce it. Uh, we use this case as a, as a model to launch our campaign because we felt it was necessary. Lenise Forrest is, is, was a hardworking young lady in the community. She did everything right. She volunteered in the community. She assisted the, the senior citizens. She's just a community um, type person. And we felt that this was the perfect case for us to come in and, and, and try to lend her a hand of assistance. We're out here today with the Chicago Anti-Eviction Campaign, a group of organizations that came together along with residents from across the city who felt that it was inhumane and immoral to be evicting single mothers, people on fixed income. We are here today to demand that our city, local housing authority, federal housing authority, put a moratorium on the eviction of people on fixed income in public housing, subsidized housing, and in Section 8 housing. Our government has bailed out the banks. 
They have bailed out the auto industry. They have saved a few foreclosed people. But there has been nothing done for the homeless populations in these cities and nothing done to help people with rental assistance living in public housing, subsidized housing, and Section 8 housing. As we all know, these are some trying times in America. Unemployment at a, almost at an all-time high. People are finding it hard to find work in this country. If you cannot find work, you cannot maintain an income. If you cannot maintain an income, you cannot pay rent. Should the punishment be homelessness? We don't think so. So we as residents of the city of Chicago and Cabrini Green have came together that say this will be the last eviction. There will be no eviction. We're against any eviction of poor people in our country and in our city. At this time, I would like to introduce Lanise Forrest. But let's be clear on this. We are all Lanise Ford, be it yes. today or tomorrow. This can happen to any of our loved ones. Yes. Thank you. Hello, I'm Lanise Forrest, and I just came out to um, thank everybody for coming out and helping me in my situation. And then I know there's a lot of people out here in my neighborhood going through the same things. And I just don't want to move, and I just need some understanding from someone, and I'm just asking for help for for just to go on with my life and help and have my kids have a good upbringing or make sure that I will have a good Thanksgiving. My name is Matt Ginsburg Jacob. I'm also with the Chicago Anti-Eviction Campaign and the STOP organization. This is just the beginning. Whenever the sheriff comes, they will find resistance here. After the sheriff leaves, if they come here when there's not enough people, we will move Lenise back in this apartment because this is a statement that from here on out, no evictions will be tolerated based on economics in the city of Chicago. The sheriff, Tom Dart, did a lot when he refused to evict tenants out of foreclosed homes. We saying have a heart for the people at the bottom. Refuse to evict this young lady living in public housing. She deserves a home. The holidays are coming up. Yes. And, and, and we reach into the hearts of man today. We really are in authorities. Have a heart. I don't have any money saved. So you literally going to be out here on the street? That's what they say. Not if we can help it. This is a real community. One thing about Cabrini, we're one community, we one community. You know, uh, we're not gonna let our residents go homeless over here. We're gonna do whatever it takes to make sure Lanise is not homeless this winter. Whatever it takes. A lot of people are talking about hoping about change, but unfortunately for the people at the bottom, things remain the same. And so we can't wait anymore for anybody else to implement our human rights. We can't wait anymore for anybody else uh, to come on and implement the law or implement what's right. We need to do it ourselves. And so that's what the anti-eviction campaign is about. This is just a Chicago chapter of a global movement. And basically the tactics of this movement is to implement our human right to housing, which means take back vacant housing, which means to keep people in their housing, which means put people back in their housing if they get removed from the housing. The Chicago Anti-Eviction Campaign um, takes its lead from several um, prominent organizations, you know, um, the um, Take Back the Land Initiative in Miami, the Poor People Economic Human Rights Campaign, um, Anti-Eviction Campaign, um, the People's Bailout in Minnesota was a um, well-connected um, campaign. Uh, we, are, we were a member group of um, the campaign, Poor People Economic Human Rights Campaign, and we got a lot of leadership development and um, lessons through them about how to do anti-evictions and about how to move this process forward. Now, we encourage everybody to get involved. We're going to be doing many more blockades. Um, we need emergency response teams so that any hour of the day, any hour of the night that the sheriff comes, we're able to get people to put their bodies in front of that sheriff. I think that with my words, people will understand, and hopefully I will be able to get help through them having compassion for what I'm asking for. Some, some resources, help with, um, with just being able to stay. I'm, I'm glad that everyone came out and supported me because a lot of people are going through the same thing here in Cabrini Green, you know, in the row houses. And I feel like the holidays is next, next week. Everybody needs to have some kind of peace of mind, some help, you know, understand it. We having a choice. I want people to know that we're not trying to make a political statement. This is a movement building in America. We have to take our own destiny into our own hands. We have to defend each other. The government won't do it. The private institutions won't do it. Elected officials won't do it. It's going to take a people's movement to do it.